Welcome to Biztex Technology Show. Our guest today is Art Pangestu Hadi, the country director for Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand at Sharit Group. Sharon Group is a next generation internet technology company that exists to democratize digital access and empower businesses to grow. The company has built a diversified suite of applications installed by nearly 2.4 billion users worldwide. Now, to tell us more, welcome to the show, uh, Art. Hi, Ryan. Hi, everyone. Good to meet you all. Now, Art, for starters, uh, could you? Uh, Tell us a little bit about the Shared Group and its history. Yeah, so um, Shared Group, uh, one of the main app, is basically an app developers company. Uh, and one of our flagship is actually this app called Shared that um, helps users to transfer most of the data and also the apps instead of the one phone to another phone as well. Um, along the way, I think we believe that um, the content, what we call the content, um, consisting of data and also apps should be equally shared. So that's the reason why I think um, for starting from the past two years, we are uh, pushing a lot of strategy to entertain our users, not just only to have like um, a functional of transferring app, but also having like a lot of um, uh, gamifications instead of the shared itself and also uh, short video content for that one as well. Okay, so this is interesting because so your two key products are your shared app and your mobile advertising platform. But your Correct. business model has changed since 2015. Walk us through the evolution of your business model. Yeah, I mean, the, it depends on what kind of the markets that uh, perceive us as well, right? So, I mean, the, by early years and back in 2015, uh, we are seeing ourselves as just an utility apps. And we were welcomed very highly on, in a market such as India and our second market that were quite um, strongly uh, receiving us was actually Indonesia. And from these two markets, I think um, if you go down to this uh, shop, cell phone owner, especially in Indonesia and also in Malaysia, um, if, we, if we try to talk to them and they prefer share it uh, as one of the utility, utility apps to use when a customer is buying a phone in their shop, and instead of just using the, the, the current Wi-Fi or even like the telco data, they are prevailing to use share it because they find it more um, faster to transfer all the data and more convenient for it, you know, both for the shop owners and also the, the, the customer, their, their customer as well. So I think um, along the way, uh, of course, business model is adapting into each one of the markets itself. And especially for Indonesia, we are working, um, trying to answering what the what our users in Indonesia wanted. Uh, the market seems to be very acceptance, uh, very high acceptance on gaming and also short videos. And that's the reason why I think for the past two and three years, Indonesia itself, we are really working very hard and towards uh, to create this kind of content videos and also uh, uh, game center on our inside of our platform itself. Now, Art, it's yes. interesting that you mentioned earlier that the two fastest markets that were adopted by, uh, in terms of adoption by Sharit, uh, of Sharit, was really India and Indonesia. Why do you think that was the case? And these are very, two very large populations. Yeah, I think maybe it's because one of the key points, uh, since we are introducing ourselves as a utility app, um, even if you take a look at the uh, Google Play Store, we basically uh, utility app. And most of the behavior of in this market when people is using their phone is, you know, not just the social media apps also, but the, the utility apps itself. And we became their favorite in the utility apps uh, category itself on those markets. Okay. And, and, what do you think were the key success factors for your growth? Because your growth was not linear, it was exponential. Yeah. <laughs> Why was that compared to some of your competitors, for example? Yeah, we were pretty lucky on that, on, the, on this market, I have to say. Uh, mainly it's because we were really focusing on delivering, um, you know, the key, the, the key factor of a utility app itself, right? Mainly it's because how fast can we do to transfer a photo file or a music file from one device to another device as well. So we work very hard on that part, um, giving a very uh, good quality assurance on that one as well. And then 
yeah, I think that resulting the output of uh, people in India and also in Indonesia and other markets in Southeast Asia accepting that one as well and recognize it as well. So that's that's something that we are pretty uh, proud of as well. Okay, I want to zoom in then on share it specifically because reports uh, that I've read indicate that the gaming app sharing accounts for uh, Asia. You yes, that's correct. For almost half in the last three months. That's a <laughs> phenomenal market <laughs> share. Tell us why. What's the trend yeah. here in mobile gaming in our part of the world? Correct, correct, correct. So I think in Southeast Asia, right? Um, uh, we do like love gaming as well, right? So I think we can see that a lot of um, um consumer in, in 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 Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, Thailand, and um, we can see that consumer spending on games in app games on. on you know, the whole games industry were increased more about um, 16, $16 billion, I guess. Those are the, ball, the, the, the number of ballpark. And we can see that even like for Indonesia, and um, we are seeing that anime, anime style games and also um, action games and also role play, role play kind of uh, categories games were quite increasing massively from the past uh, two years. And us on Shared as a tra file transferring app, we can, we can see that most of our users, especially in Indonesia, using Shared to transfer um, big sites of uh, games apps as well. So, for instance, like um, we can see that um, Garena's uh, Free Fire or even like uh, back then Tencent's uh, PUBG Mobile were actually one of the you know most of the top five of the apps that we share on 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 our traffic on, in Shared itself. Um, so, it's a so, complete yeah. difference from say three years ago. The yes, completely because uh, my first my yes. first encounter <laughs> with share it was really when i was changing my phone and the guy said hey i said, I said what app are you using on oh, this uh, app called share it and you can transfer faster correct 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 so that's why i mean um it depends on it's on one of the markets right so india southeast asia indonesia i think the behavior of mobile uh, uh the behavior of the consumer towards a mobile um uh, is pretty high on games industry and also the second one is the content short videos as well and us as a utilities company we can see that and we're trying to you know um, entertain our users with that kind of uh, bridging the whole uh, strategy into one platform itself and yeah i think uh, we humbly say that uh, i think for now the strategy works well for us that's why i mean back again the growth is in this market for us is very very uh good for us as well so that's why i think we are pretty lucky that's what i must say so can you share with us what the top three mobile game app sharing trends that you've observed um so based on the category i can say that most uh the, the highest ones usually an action casual kind of games and the second one is the um how do you call it like any anime style kind of game and the third one is actually a strategy game so those three categories um, we are seeing similar um, in the traffic transfer between this country in Southeast Asia and uh, also India. So I think, yeah, those are the top categories. How, uh, and I've got to ask this because this is obviously a category that is also gaining a lot of traction, play to earn games. Yes. Uh, how is that resonating in the Southeast Asian market? Yeah, I think uh, we can see that uh, there's a lot of, uh, uh, games developer partner that we are seeing that um you you know um working with us on our game center we're doing that, that kind of particular um how do you call it like particular kind of model uh we can see that a lot of uh, our partner in the philippines and also vietnam were you know were testing themselves towards this kind of behavior but then again uh for, for shared stuff um i think it's still for us we're still trying to review and see how the market uh, accept that kind of business model and yeah i think uh, uh maybe in the future we trying to get it uh, for ourselves <laughs> as a strategy to to entertain our users okay so because of, because y'all are so clued up on the, the the advertising space tell us about some key advertising trends in mobile that is gaining momentum what's what's happening on the ground there yeah, so um, it's pretty quite dynamic, I can say, Brian. Like um, in Southeast Asia, I think our top uh, categories of uh, advertisers were ranging from uh, 
e-commerces and also game developers and then all of my fintech. So I think if you take a look, I'm not going to say that it's going to be like a um, shared perspective, but I think um, the global Southeast Asia kind of perspective, there might be some kind of uh, emerging that I'm, I'm going to see in the near future where the combination between these three kind of categories will be happening from each one of the uh, advertisers itself. Okay, so, and what about, what about the future of mobile gaming? I mean, Web mm -hmm. 3.0, Metaverse, how is that going to impact then? Where are the opportunities and challenges that lie ahead? It's early days for Metaverse, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, very early. So <laughs> this is funny because I was just like um, having this discussion with uh, people from the uh, in the Philippines as well. So I think they're still uh, reviewing it as well on the Metaverse and also in Web, Web 3. But uh, from our side, I think um, uh, we, we also open for any kind of business model uh, for this kind of you know um, new kind of uh, behavior towards the developer. But then again, we still need to review it towards into our users as well and how they perceive and, and accept this kind of uh, model on their side as well. And given all of these trends that we've just talked about, what should marketers be paying more attention from for in terms of this channel for more marketing and promotions? So I always do believe uh, marketers or even like um, advertisers uh, should always um, updating themselves regarding about what kind of, you know, metrics and what kind of communications that they are going to, you know, to put out to, to get their objective uh, plan out, right? So um, it's always been like, you need to focus on your story first, uh, on how your uh, marketing story will be perceived on it's one of the audience that you are targeted and then trying to mix it up with the current um, uh, trend as well like right now currently I think um, the fintech world is you know is and um, the fintech world were quite um, trying to figuring out a way to merge with the gaming industry and also there's a lot of blockchain is, is, is chipping into the discussion as well so I think marketers need to find out uh, uh, a very good thin line in that part and trying to, oh, okay, I think um, my objective and my stories um, can be delivered if I'm trying to mix this kind of model into my communication as well. So if a marketer find a sweet spot between these two kind of vision as well. So I think, um, yeah, I think um, that marketers should be, you know, having a success with this year. And looking ahead now, what are some key e-commerce and mobile trends that you see for 2022 and beyond? Yeah, uh, for this year only, I think most of the marketers uh, and a little bit of uh, the gaming industry as well, they, one of them were trying to see how the brand performance work. Um, so what I call brand performance is actually in combinations between uh, the branding piece where, I mean, uh, marketers seems to be focusing on the metrics of how the brand is, was uh, going to be recalled by the audience and stuff, but needs to funneling it down until the metrics of, you know, lower funnel itself. So the branding side and also the performance side comes together on the, in the terms of brand performance. Mm -hmm. And then after that one as well, then maybe for the next year, 2023 and 2024, I, I must say that there's going to be a chip in between the whole kind of blockchain coming in and also um, play to earn coming in just to adding up into this kind of brand performance itself. Okay, so exciting times, also very complicated. How it are is. you going to manage the complexity mm -hmm. around the predictability and measurement of all this? Um, so the whole point is, uh, for me, I think for Share It, uh, I think we need to keep up, you know, with this kind of trend, obviously. So that's why, I mean, uh, from our side, we always do uh, our own kind of uh, individual research into the market itself and trying to figuring out and also uh, trying to adapt into what kind of the user market will be and also what kind of uh, strategy that we need to apply for the marketing strategy as well. So, um, yeah, I think uh, for us, uh, it's, I think we are sitting in a very VIP desk and seeing a lot of this kind of uh, trends happening as well. So I think we're pretty lucky to have that kind of positions itself. So um, yeah, I think that's the reason why I think um, I can say that uh, Sherrod 
in Southeast Asia, most probably one of the platform that might be able and might be ready to accept that kind of challenge of bridging the whole brand performance uh, uh, situation. And also uh, in 2003, 23, and also 2024, trying to accept that kind of additional into the, into the, into the mix itself. But before we leave, any final thoughts you'd like to leave us with? Um, so I think I'm going to put it into follow the marketers people as well, because I think uh, um, I'm starting to, I'm pretty happy that I'm starting to see that a lot of people in, uh, in, in the brand side and also in the game developer uh, side as well, seeing that uh, it is important to watch the whole kind of communication uh, funneling from the branding side until the by the very far end. And they need to understand that, you know, people need to understand your product as well, right? So I think uh, um, I'm pretty humbly and I'm pretty happy to see that when, you know, a lot of people, especially from the e-commerce people, the game developer people understand that uh, uh, people will, will choose your product mainly because they understand you guys as well. So I think uh, that is already starting happening there. Thank you very much for taking your time to be on the show. Welcome, Brian. Now, I'm Brian Fernandez, and we've been speaking to Ad Pangestu Hadi, the country director for Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand uh, for sales at Share It Group on Biztech Technology Show. This video and podcast will be on our social media platforms as well as our website, www.biztech.asia. Please like and subscribe to our various platforms. Thanks again for tuning in.